2022 is the year where China is going to fully assemble their space station. As of today, the Chinese space station, also known as Tiangong, is in an incomplete configuration. You have the Tianhe core module, which is circling the Earth at an altitude of roughly 400 kilometers, and connected to it, you have the Shenzhou 14 crewed spacecraft and the Tianzhou 3 and Tianzhou 4 cargo spacecraft docked respectively to the radial forward and aft docking ports. This Tianhe core module was launched in April 2021 and will manage all the central functions of the future Chinese space station, such as guidance, navigation and control, and propulsion. It's been undergoing all kinds of technology verification tests over the past year, but this recently has come to an end, and so in the coming months, a lot is going to happen as the Chinese move forward to complete their space station. In this episode, let's give a step-by-step -step recap of what is going to happen next and what the final station will look like. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. The first big step is going to be in July 2022 with the launch of the Wentian Space Laboratory. This is a massive 20-ton module which will form the second central piece of the Chinese space station, and dedicated to space sciences, it will house a number of experimental racks and an external payload bay for space sciences. It also has three additional sleeping cabins which will increase the max simultaneous number of astronauts in the station to six, and it also has an airlock chamber which will replace the multi-docking knot airlock for spacewalks. The Wentian experimental module will be launched from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center situated on the island of Hainan on board a Long March 5B, which is a variant of China's heaviest rocket, the Long March 5. Once the Long March 5B reaches orbital velocity, Wentian separates, deploys its antenna and its solar arrays, and then it performs a rendezvous with the Tianhe core module to dock to the forward docking port. The space station then performs an 180-degree change in the yaw axis and completes the extension of its massive solar arrays, which then become the main source of power of the space station. A 90-degree attitude change in the pitch axis is then performed so that the Tianzhou spacecraft is pointing downwards and the multi-docking knot is pointing upwards. And then Wen Tian uses a small robotic arm, similar to the Soviet Lyapo arm, to undock and to transfer itself to the starboard side and dock with the docking port over there. And this is a highly critical maneuver, which is why the 10 meter long main robotic manipulator of the Chinese space station is also available as a backup for the transfer. And this backup plan was practiced by the Chinese a couple of months ago using the now defunct Tianzhou 2 cargo spacecraft. Once the transfer is complete, the second experimental module, Mengtian, will launch in October 2022 on board a Long March 5B. And Mengtian is also around 20 tons, and while it looks quite similar to Wentian, it's actually very different with no sleeping quarters and with more experimental racks, and also with a different airlock chamber system which is used to deploy cargo outside of the space station. Mengtian will dock radially to the front docking port of the Tianhe core module, and similar to Wentian, it will be transferred to the port side docking unit using its own Lyapa style robotic arm. And then in November 2022, the Tianzhou 5 cargo mission will then launch from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on a Long March 7 and will dock with the rear docking port of the Tianhe 1, bringing supplies and fueling to the space station. And finally, following this, the Shenzhou 15 crew mission will launch on board a Long March 2F around December 2022, bringing an additional crew of three astronauts to the Chinese space station. And at this point, the Chinese space station will be hosting a total of six astronauts and will be in its most complete configuration, forming a 60-ton T-shaped structure consisting of one core module and two experimental modules, and to which two Shenzhou crewed spacecraft and one Tianzhou cargo spacecraft are docked. And this marks the completion of the construction phase of the Chinese space station and the beginning of the operational phase. And while this may seem like the end game of the Chinese crewed program in low Earth orbit, there are actually many hints, including from Yang Li Wei, the deputy chief engineer of the Chinese crewed program, that the Chinese space station will be expanded further in the future. 
One of the main pieces of evidence is that when the Tianhe core module was first being manufactured, there was actually a second Tianhe module which was built as a backup in case the first one wasn't compliant with specifications. But since then, you know, the performance of the first Tianhe core module, which was launched last year, was validated. And so there's the question of what is to become of the second Tianhe module, which we can temporarily call Tianhe 2. Naturally, it's highly unlikely that this second Tianhe module will just be thrown away. And the thing is, the modular design of the Chinese space station enables a second Tianhe module to be docked to the multi-docking nod of the initial Tianhe 1 core module. And once this is done, although this is pure speculation, we can also imagine that two experimental modules would then be added and could dock to the new Tianhe 2 module, forming this six module station, which would have two actual and two radial docking ports for visiting spacecraft. These new modules, however, would probably have some differences with the current ones though. The back of the Tianhe 2 module would probably be different to enable active rendezvous and docking, and the whole module would probably be deprived of a lot of the control systems that the Tianhe 1 currently has, because the Tianhe 1 would remain the core command center of the whole Chinese space station. The additional experimental labs would probably also be quite a bit different. They would probably have no solar arrays due to the possible conflict with the existing solar arrays. And they could also include new features such as something similar to the ISS Cupola Dome, which is something that neither the Wenqian and Mengqian experimental modules currently have at the moment. The fully assembled and expanded Chinese space station would then have a mass of 120 tons or 180 tons if you include the various cargo and crewed spacecraft that are docked to it. This remains smaller than the International Space Station's roughly 400 tons of mass, but it's on par with the former Mir Station of the USSR at roughly 130 tons, although admittedly mass is not necessarily the most relevant factor to compare space stations of different generations. And finally, just to wrap up this episode, I want to add that I'll be live streaming and commenting the launches of the future Chinese space station modules, notably of Wentian at the end of July and Mengtian in October. So do stay tuned to the channel if you want to see that. And as always, a special thanks to all our kind Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. And this is especially symbolic since this is the 100th episode of the Dongfang Hour channel. And so again, a big thank you to all of you who've been watching the channel for a while, not just Patreon supporters, but also subscribers and viewers. Thank you so much for making this possible, and I'll see you in the next episode.